call a new beginning, a new chapter, a new season in ministry for, for Old First and for myself and the family. Uh, I bring you greetings and blessings from the rest of the Means crew who are still in Michigan. Uh, my wife has decided that this is the longest month of her life. And I've decided that it's the easiest month of her life. <laughs> so, what a great thing to have new beginnings and to have new opportunities. As we gather for worship, we have a couple of announcements that will be shared by different folks. Uh, the first is from the PW Mission, uh, Kathy Porter. Thank you. Thank you. 
members of the church established a subscription list and uh, people uh, indicated how much they would contribute. We know <coughs> the total contribution was, was approximately 500 pounds, which is a small amount uh, if, you, if you consider uh, the cost of uh, the, uh, the, the, all, all of the, the material that was, that was needed, and, and of course also the, uh, uh, the food that they have to uh, provide uh, during the construction. One more thing, the bell. You know, you know the story. You all know the story of the bell that was taken by the British Occupation Force and used on a Russian warship uh, at that time. Then, after the revolution, the uh, the bell was returned. To the church. Actually, they even had to pay an amount to, to get it, to get it, to get it free. Uh, and uh, the cell ran here for many years.
cleanse us within. Come as holy light and lead us into darkness. Come as holy power and enable our weakness. Come as holy light and dwell within us. Convict us, convert us, and consecrate us. Set us free from the service of ourselves and be your servants to the world. Inspired by the presence of the Holy Spirit, friends, let us worship God together. Invite us to bow together in a word of prayer. Gracious God, on this day of new beginnings, this beautiful and joy-filled day, we ask your blessing to be upon this time of worship, and upon your people, your children gathered here to praise your name. May the things that we think and say and do be glorifying to you and draw others into your name this day and every day. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Christ, as together God's people say, Amen.
beauty of our faith is that God still welcomes us, God still calls us, God still embraces us with open arms. And God calls us to know who we are and to seek God's forgiveness. Friends, knowing this and believing this, I invite us to join together in today's prayer of confession. Gracious and merciful God, your word is given to us as a gift, but we use it to judge one another and to do it. Call us to this time and place to worship you, that our minds on your knees. You shower us with gifts of love, for we long for even more things to make us happy. You create us with talents and skills to share your good news with the world. But when we choose to protect what we have in our own small corner, if you pour out your love and grace for us, but we fool ourselves by pretending that we do not need you. Loving God, urge through our heart with complacency, transform our narrow perspectives, and forgive how far we have wandered from the following of your word. Let us again on the path of faithful discipleship as we commit ourselves anew, sowing your seeds of life. Take control of our thoughts. Words and actions, and they may plant seeds in the lives of others that will reap a bountiful harvest for you. We pray together in the name of Jesus our Christ. Together, let all people say.
to use the microphone today, not that you could hear me better, but that everybody else could hear me better, so bear with me. I don't want to feel like I'm shouting at you guys. So I have a question for you. Have any of you ever planted a garden? Yes, you did? This is good, because the gardening thing is kind of new to me a few years ago, but I used to be really bad at it, and now I'm better at it. But we got these things. Have you ever seen a package of seeds? Okay, so when you go to plant a package of seeds, you know the best way to plant it is to take the whole package and just stick it in your pocket, right? <laughs> no? Okay, how about, how about, what if I took the packet and opened it, and I took those seeds and I just poured them into my pocket and called it good? Would that work? That's what you did yesterday? <laughs> so you and I need to learn to grow together, huh? <laughs> So, so what am I missing here? Should I unpack the seeds, take them out of the packet, and just stick them on the kitchen counter? No, you gotta put them in dirt. That's right. You gotta put them somewhere, right? And some of them will grow, yes, and some of them won't. And I guess part of it depends on what kind of gardener you are, right? But they don't do any good in your pocket, do they? Absolutely. Now, do you think they're gonna grow in your pocket? That'll work. <laughs> That'll work. But they won't grow, will they? Ooh! That's a good idea. We'll put dirt in my pocket. I like it. So this is what happens when the pastor doesn't have his wife and kids with him. He's going to try stuff like that. <laughs> I like it. But the important thing is you got to get them in dirt, right? You can't just sit them in that package and do nothing with them, even if the dirt's in your pocket, right? Absolutely. Uh, sorry if I get you in trouble later. <laughs> Today we're talking about a story Jesus told about a sower that went out and sowed seeds and planted seeds, and he didn't do a very good job planting them. He put them all over the place and didn't really care if they found dirt or not. But the important thing is, is that he put them somewhere, right? He didn't hold on to them and stick them in his pocket. And the same is true for us. When we go out into the world and we're called to love people and we're called to love God and to serve God and do the things that God has called us to do, to say things of love and to do things of love. And if we don't do that, nothing happens, right? Nobody knows that they're loved. Nobody knows that they're cared for. If we just hang on to all those gifts God has given us and do nothing with them. So I want to encourage you guys today not to go home and put dirt in your pocket, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? But to go home and speak words of love and do things that show you love people, because if we don't, who will? Who will? So let's do that together. And let's say a prayer and we'll ask for God's help. All right? Pray. Dear God, we thank you for the opportunity to show your love and to do your love. Help us to remember to do these things always and not to hold on to the gifts you have given us. We pray in Jesus' name as together we say, Amen. Our second lesson is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter, beginning in the first verse. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on a beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. 
And since they had no roots, they withered away. Other seeds fell along the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked the seeds out. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is the seed that was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. But such a person has no roots, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arise on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word out, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Friends, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we were living in Louisville, Kentucky at seminary. Amy and I had, shall we say, I guess the pleasure of joining with about 20 other students and caring for, uh, it was called a community vegetable garden, but there wasn't much to it. As the season neared, we were given this great and wonderful patch of earth that was in terrible, terrible, horrible shape, but we were told it had great possibility. I remember looking at that barren and empty dirt, just waiting for seeds to be planted and imagining all the grand possibilities it held, the amazing fruits and vegetables that it would yield. It would be a wonderful sight to brighten the campus, a great ever-present reminder of the goodness of our God. Each day, Amy and I would go out to look at the garden, and each day would bring the same spectrum of emotions, equal parts horror, for how awful this thing looked, and yet great surprise every now and then for the rare moment when something would actually take root and blossom. There in one corner of the garden was the fulfillment of every gardener's hope and dream, as just in the other corner was every gardener's most horrifying nightmare. We learned quickly that when it comes to community gardens, not all soil is created equal, and we learned that not all gardeners are created equal either. In one corner there was shallow dirt and things would grow and get burnt by the sun. And another corner was the place that people threw all the rocks and stones and pieces of cement and bricks that they dug out of the garden. And every now and then a little sprout would come forth, but it didn't make it. The south side of the garden was under this beautiful shade of maple tree. But there were birds in the tree, and every time you planted something, the birds would come and eat it before it had a chance to do anything. But then there was that rare occasion, and I mean incredibly rare occasion, when things went just right. The soil was well cared for, the seeds had that perfect balance of sun and water, they were areas protected from the rocks and the animals, and seeds would prosper. This great harvest of fruit and vegetables would spring forth, and they were a joy to those who planted them, not us, I might add. <laughs> Friends, as we gather in worship today, a pastor and congregation taking the first steps of what we hope and pray is a long and prosperous journey, our lives together are not so different from that patch of earth at Louisville Seminary. We worship today united in a new beginning, a new chapter, a new season of ministry at Old First with new and exciting opportunities before us to sow the seeds of God's work. The time we share together as pastor and congregation is ripe and fertile, waiting to burst forth with a crop that we cannot even imagine today. As we think about our future together, all the possibilities that lie before us, picture the harvest that may await. As together we sow the seeds of God's word, nurture the work God is doing in the lives of his children, 
and follow God faithfully into the ministries God has entrusted to our care. As we begin this time together, I can think of no better place to start than the parable of the sower to mark a path to the joys and challenges we will surely meet. Because in this parable, there are two lessons for us. And if we are to succeed in ministry together, then friends, we have to be willing to meet not one of them, but both of them. But don't panic, because it's only two. And while they are difficult, they are doable. The first is a question that we have to answer. And friends, it is this. What kind of soil will we be? It seems to be the most obvious lesson as you think about the different places that the seeds fell. And we'd be short-sighted if we didn't ask that question of ourselves and one another. What kind of soil will we be? How will we receive the Word of God and put it into action? What kind of environment will we create in our lives and in the life of this church we share? For listening to the Word of God. For allowing God's Word to be nurtured in our hearts. To see it bear fruit in our world. This is a question, friends that we must answer each and every one of us before we can answer it together. So I invite us, I challenge us to ask ourselves today and in the days that follow, what kind of soil do I have in my heart? Is it hardened right now? Are we cynics? Are we doubters? Are we someone who wonders just how much we should commit to the work of God in our lives? Is there little room for God in our heart? because we're too worried about the things that we want for ourselves. Maybe there's some pain or loss in life that prevents God's word from even breaking through the surface today. Maybe God's word struggles to take root in our lives because our heart is hardened by some painful experience that we just can't seem to get past. Or do we have that rocky, shallow soil in our hearts today? Sometimes not even aware of all the crowded places that interfere with our experience of God's Word. We hear the Word, we're excited about the Word, but then we go home and we start to forget. That feeling of joy and excitement over what is happening in our faith or in the life of the church doesn't last long enough. There's genuine joy in its hearing. But then those challenging times arrive, and we begin to doubt, doubt God's presence, doubt, doubt God's love. Without those deep roots, crisis comes, problems arise, and we begin to wonder why God would let this happen to us, and so that excitement and that commitment begin to fade. Or do we have hearts today filled with thorns and weeds, where God's word grows quickly and easily until, until life's distractions begin to pull us in other directions and choke out that commitment to our faith. We're committed, we really are, to growing in faith and sharing in ministry, but over time, other things, other places, other people, other commitments begin to take precedent. We see the distractions, the worries of work, of family, of friends, and we try, we really try to strike that balance, but slowly our desire for the things of God begins to fade. And before we know it, we've made it very difficult for God's Word to grow. Because all those other demands have left us so exhausted that there's nothing left to give. And our faith starts to choke itself out. Now, if we're honest, friends, we have all had times in our lives when those things are the picture of who we are and who we long to be in the life of the church. When we're not the kind of listeners that we want to be. So this parable today is our reminder, as we begin a new season in ministry, that we have been called together not for some random experience of life, but for a reason and a purpose. So friends, let us commit ourselves today to joining hands as pastor and congregation to create a community of faith, a church family, that will help each other not be those kinds of soil, but to be the good soil. The place where God's word can be planted, take root, and bear fruit beyond our wildest dreams. May we encourage one another to spend the time and the effort and the energy necessary to be a people of faith who hear God's word and allow it to take deep root in our hearts, encouraging one another not to let it fall by the wayside, but to ignite a burning desire within us to hear God's word, to believe God's word, and to live God's word 
in all that we say and do. Let us be constant reminders to one another that the ministry we share at Old First is important. It's a gift given by God. Let us commit to making our faith not just a small part of who we are, reserved for a sacred hour on Sunday morning, but instead to let the life of faith be so much more that God wants it to be. Encouraging one another, supporting one another, recognizing that ministry takes effort and commitment. May it be our deepest desire to join hands and hearts to make Old First a place where God's word is not forgotten but takes deep root and where the fruits of those seeds may result in an amazing harvest for God. For if this is the commitment we share, then friends, there is no telling, no telling at all what God will accomplish in our lives or in our church as we join in ministry. Now I guess I could stop there and we could consider it a message well shared, but remember I said earlier, there are two challenges that will shape us as pastor and congregation. And too often we stop at the first. We think, oh my, that's hard work. I gotta make myself good soil. I gotta make the church good soil. And that is hard work. But too often we stop there. Remember, friends, that this parable isn't just about seeds and soil. There is something else in this story that Jesus shares, or someone else in this story. What about the sower? What about the one who's scattering all those seeds? At first glance, he doesn't seem to know what he's doing at all. Think about it. There's no rhyme or reason to how he plants. There's no plan of action. There's no thought to where the best place to plant seeds may be. There's no attempt to avoid the bad ground and scatter seed only in the good soil. There's no hanging on to the seed until he's sure that the ground he's planting in will yield this great harvest. And while this may make the sower a horrible, terrible, very, very bad farmer, you know what it does make him? A pretty tremendous evangelist. As pastor and congregation, we will work together to maintain many existing ministries that have been Old First lifeblood. But we'll also have the chance to create new opportunities. New opportunities for people to receive and live the Word of God. Everything we do together, every word we speak, every action we take, will be an opportunity to sow a seed into the lives of others. At any point, friends, if we stop scattering that seed, then we will have failed. If at any point we allow concerns about whether we are scattering our seed only in good places or among good people, then we will have failed. We will have failed to meet God's charge to serve and love and embrace and join with all God's children. Now, I promise you today, and you can hold me to this, whether it's tomorrow or it's 20 years from now, I promise you, there will be times when we see with our own eyes great successes in ministry. But I will also promise you that there will be just as many times when we think we failed. We will make mistakes. We will disappoint one another. But even in those moments, if we remain committed to sharing God's word through thought, word, and deed, then even then, seeds will have been planted. For even in our failure, God can nurture his seed into a great harvest. I was reminded of this a couple of weeks ago when I read a story online. An illustration about a preacher who accepted a new call to a new church. A few days after he arrived in town, he rode the bus from his home into the downtown area. And when he got on the bus, he sat down and realized the driver had given him just a quarter too much change. So he sat there having this dialogue with himself. You better give that quarterback. It would be wrong to keep it. But then he thought, oh, forget it. It's just a quarter. Who cares about something that small? Besides, the bus company already gets way too much profit. They'll never miss a quarter. Just move on with the day. As he stood up to exit the bus, he paused for a moment and handed the quarter back to the driver. And said, here, you gave me too much change. Smiling at him, the driver replied, Hey, aren't you the new preacher in town? Yes, he answered. 
The driver said, well, I've been thinking a lot lately about finding a place to worship. So I wanted to see what you would do if I gave you too much change. <laughs> and after a long pause, the bus driver looked at him with a smile and said, I'll tell you what, preacher, I'll see you at church on Sunday. The pastor stepped off the bus, shaking with the realization that he had nearly sold the gift of Jesus Christ for a quarter. Growing up, we had a pastor in our church who would often remind us that when we live our lives out there in the world and with each other, that we are the only Bible that some people will ever read. Friends, if that is the case, then every time we step out into the world, we have an opportunity to sow the seeds of God's Word into someone's life. We won't know always the type of soil we are planting that seed into, but still we are called to plant. We may not always be encouraged by the visible signs of our garden, but still we are called to plant. So friends, here's what we're going to do together as pastor and congregation. We'll keep it simple. We will tend to our souls, and we will keep on sowing the seed of God's word. Just those two things. Because if we remain passionately committed to both those challenges, both of them at the same time, then the ministry we have been called to share will be a great and wonderful success, not because of us, but because of God working through us. There will be challenges, and the task will never be easy, but on the day of harvest, we will celebrate all that God has accomplished through the seeds we have sown together. And we will hear God speak the words that every heart longs to hear. Well done, old first. Well done, my good and my faithful servants. Thanks be to God. Amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you have called us to be a people who live not lives of solitude and loneliness, but lives of community and family. We give you thanks that you have called us not to walk the way before us alone, but to be joined with brothers and sisters in Christ who join us in planting the seeds of your word into the lives of one another and to this world. That as we join together as pastor and congregation, and begin a new season in ministry, may it be one marked by a true sense of joy and passion, of enthusiasm and commitment to the work ahead. That as we grow together and we share with one another the joys and challenges of living life and sharing in ministry, we would do so with love and grace and forgiveness and mercy so that the world may see who we are in thought, word, and deed, and know something of who you are. We remember this day all who are here to gather in worship and all who cannot be with us. Keep those safe who are in places of harm this day. Bring healing to those who are sick. Bring comfort to those who grieve. And bring hope to us all that as we reach out into this world and to one another in thought, word, and deed, we would do so with the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit always upon our hearts. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Christ, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, giving God the gifts of our tithes and offerings.
thanks that you have given us so many gifts, skills, and talents that we may give to your work among us and in our world, so that together all that we offer and give to you in your work may help us to sing that jubilant song as we serve you faithfully. We give you thanks in the name of your Son, Jesus our Christ, in whose name we pray together as all God's people say, Amen.
have nearly tripping down the stairs. <laughs> well, let's make memories a better way. Because I can think of no better picture for what we've talked about today and what we ought to live as when we started to sing, all are welcome in this place. I don't know if you know this, but the doors are open. We sang that to Huntington. We sang it to Town Hall. We sang it to cars. We sang it to people walking by. And now we get the chance not to just sing it, but to go live it. Friends, let us go out into the world, not leaving the seeds of God's word in our pocket where they can do nothing but sharing them with the world in great need so that all will know that they are welcome in the house of God, in the arms of God, and in the love of God's people. Friends, let us go about that task knowing that we do not go alone, but go uplifted by the love of God, nourished by the grace of Jesus Christ, and inspired by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen.